Now, if you're having problems with your, with your overlock or with the tension, I've got a fun little exercise for you to do. What I want you to do is cut four strips of fabric, or rather eight strips of fabric, and what I've done is I've cut them two inches wide. Each of those strips I've numbered one to nine, and I've numbered them one to nine in two inch increments. Then at the bottom, what I've done is I've got another little box, again in two inches, which I've labelled for the tension dial that I'll be adjusting for this chart. On this one, it's UL. So that means it's the upper looper and on the machine it's coded in red so I've labelled it red and I've threaded the upper looper in red thread. Now that will give me the chart I need while I'm adjusting the tension dial on the machine so that when I adjust the tension dial to one I will just stitch on the one box and then change it to two follow the stitches down on the two box and so on. And when I've gone all the way through, right down to number nine, I have a look at the stitches and decide which of those stitches looks perfect. I'm only looking at the red thread and I'll have a look where the red thread looks perfect. When it gives me a perfect stitch out, what I'll do is I'll stitch all the way down to the bottom of the charts of the strip. And I've numbered it three because when I got to three, that's when the red stitches look perfect for me. I've done the same with the left needle, the right needle and the lower looper and it's really easy to do. Here's how you do it. So the yellow is the lower looper, you can mark it on your machine if you want to. So that's my lower looper. This one's my upper looper but the green needle is on the right so that's my right needle and this one is my left needle like that so all the tension dials are set to three and what I've done is I've pulled on the thread at the top and at the bottom and really pushed it in to make sure it's sat right inside those tension discs the next thing I want to do is just check my knife setting now the knife is set right in the middle there along that middle line and the way to adjust it is by turning this dial. You can see that black gap. If I adjust the setting you can see that gap getting smaller. Turn it the other way and the gap gets bigger. So set the knife right into that middle line there. While we've got this looper door open I'm just going to show you this switch here. This switch adjusts the stitch finger. I want to make sure the stitch finger is forward. If it's pulled back, the machine is set for rolled hem. If that's set for rolled hem, it will adjust your tension. So just make sure the switch is forward and it's set for normal stitching. And while the looper door is open, just make sure all your threads are in the guides going through correctly. Now on the side of the machine, I've got the stitch length set at three and I've got the differential feed set at one. All we have to do is just make sure our stitch comes out all right on a sample piece. And we want a nice stitch like that and that stitch shows me nice easy loopers on the top and they flow really nicely. I've got my yellow overlock sitting on the edge. That's from my lower loop. If I flip that over, I can see perfect set of Ys. Now you can see the red stitch on the top crossing over with the yellow. I can see my green and my blue needle stitches, nice stitches forming on the front, and you can barely see them on the back. If you find that they're a bit loose like that, what's happened is that they weren't sitting in the machine correctly. So I started so I started there, like that, and I finished along here. And what's happened is that the tension of that stitch is a little bit loose. So what's possibly happened is it's jumped out of the tension because I was playing with it. I want to make sure I push that in fully. So lift up, press foot, just release that again and just make sure it's in. And I'll just stitch that again. And 
you can see the stitches are much smoother now. So we'll start with the lower looper. The lower looper is in yellow thread. What we're going to do is we're going to go all the way down to one. I'm going to just match those pieces of cotton up. And because they keep moving, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a pin all the way on this side. Make sure it's out of the way so I don't accidentally nick it. Go right down to one and we'll stitch that. And it doesn't matter if you cut any fabric off, it's not going to affect our stitching. Just going to try not to cut any off just so I've got a nice neat chart. When that line reaches the needles around that point there, what I'll do is I'll change the tension up to two. So there, I'll change that to two. Change it to three. And then what I'm going to do is bring it back to factory setting on the last piece here. So I know what it should be. And I'm going to write the number three there. Now, if I do a close up for you, so you can see, let's get rid of this. You can see that this is the yellow thread we're changing. Now the yellow thread, when it's too loose at one, the thread comes all the way around to the front and you can see it's far too loose and it's affecting the result on the red thread. So it's still too far over. And then when we get to the perfect tension, as the manual tells us, it's working perfectly there at three. And then at four, you can see the red thread being pulled. And the reason it's being pulled is because the tension's too tight with the yellow. So it's pulling the red thread over. Now the red thread is getting stretched again even more and you can see it's now coming over even more and it just carries on like that. And you can see that the tension of the red is affected quite badly as it gets all the way up to nine and you can barely see any yellow thread at all. And then we bring it back to three We've got a perfect tension, nice loopy reds with the yellow and the red crossing over at the top. And we've got beautiful stitching with the blue and the green. So I'm happy with that. And we're going to write three is the perfect number for this machine on here. Now that's back at three, we're going to start stitching the chart for the upper looper. So let's bring that right down to one. Grab my chart. I'm going to place a pin in there. Just make sure I can read that number one. And we'll do the same again. So what we're looking for is a nice swirly upper looper. But what I'm seeing here is not sort of a, a swirly thing going on. If I flip the fabric over to the back, you can see that the red thread is making an appearance on the back. It's not even managing to catch on the edge of the fabric. And that's not good. So the tension for the yellow thread is stronger than the red thread. The th red thread is just way too loose and it's being forced to the back by the yellow because the balance isn't there. And as we go down the piece of fabric, you can see that the red is still being pulled along here. And as I go further and further down, I can still see some red thread there. But as I get here to this point here, that red thread is sort of sitting more and more on the edge. So if I flip that over, that's tension four. So at tension three, the red thread is still sort of hanging over the edge, a bit loopy. But on four, it's sort of sitting perfectly on the edge of the fabric. Can you see there? So four seems to be the ideal setting because when I look at five, look at the 
stitches at four, but look at them on five. They become stretched. They sort of become straight lines and not so loopy. It is a looper. We want loops, but we've not got as loopy thread going on. We've got more straight lines. And if I flip that over, I can't actually see the red thread on the edge of the fabric. It's sort of being pulled on the front. You can actually see the edge, so the swirls. Number six, you can start seeing the yellow thread being pulled over by the tight tension of the red thread. And the tension of the red thread gets even tighter and pulls it even more over to the point where at nine, there's so little red thread and it's mostly yellow thread and it's all the way around, not overlocking, sort of just locking on the top. So for this machine, as it is, the ideal tension for the upper looper thread, which is the red thread, is four. So I've stitched this section out on tension four and you can see I've got my nice Ys on the back, my overlocking on the edge of the fabric and I've got nice loops going on. Now let's work with the right needle. The right needle is our green thread and we're going to just adjust the tensions on that. Let's bring that right down to one. I'm going to place that into the machine and we're going to continue with that. You can see here what's happened as the tension's got tighter and tighter. It's really pulling on the fabric. Um, but if I show you when the tension of the green thread is too loose, you can actually see it uh, quite loopy. Um, it's hard to show this on camera, but there are loops which are quite obvious and you can see them on the back. So as we progress to two, it's still loose. As we get to three, it seems to be perfect along three. But then when we get to four, and five, it seems again to be starting to get tighter and tighter. Now with it going as tight as it is, it's affecting the blue thread and the blue thread seems to be having to compensate. And then when I bring it back to what it should be at three, it's looking great again. And I'm quite happy with that. Now we're looking at the tension of the left needle. And then I'm just going to look at my chart. I'm going to look for where the tension was perfect with the blue thread. So everything on the front looks good. So it's really going to be affected on the back. So with one, the tension's really loose and it's really loose again at two. At three, it looks like it's getting better, but I can still see the stitches. And at four, I've got good stitches with the loops, good Ys on the back, and the tension looks perfect for me on the machine at four. At five, I can see it's the loops are a little bit becoming a little bit more stretched and more uneven. And then at six, the fabric just feels a little bit on the tight side, but you can see that tension is working best um, again uh, at four, and I can see it's affecting the tension with the other numbers. So I'm gonna go back to four and stitch the rest of my chart. At four, and then just have a look, and again, it's perfect for me at four you can see the tension at nine it's pulling on the fabric it's way too tight so four for me on the machine as it is is perfect so i'm going to write four on here so then i can remember when i'm doing my stitches now it's worked out that my machine is happy at four and three, four and three for regular cotton, two layers of cotton. What I don't want to be seeing is drastic changes like this. So I don't want to have 
you know, a real unbalance of stitches. Ideally, I want to be looking at the manual and I want to be setting the machine around the numbers the manual suggests. Okay, I don't really want to have any extreme changes. If you're finding that you really have to set this up really high or this one really low to get a good stitch, then I think it's time for a service.